so let's stick on this theme of biomarker here, Ed, uh, and, and a lot of, quite a contentious issue. Uh, the, maybe not in squam. I mean, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I agree with molecular enrichment strategies for squamous cell and their ability to predict efficacy of these drugs. Um, the story's a little more murky in ADNO, but let's just talk about pd one as a biomarker and maybe dovetail that into the keynote data, because I think this is where people, community physicians, and even academic physicians started to understand, okay, maybe there is an enrichment strategy with pd one We saw higher response rates, and there was a trend based on the cutoff of pd one in, in this study. So maybe, can you distill that down and, and make it a little more easy for, for me to understand the, the, the pd one biomarker? Oh, you understand it just fine. The, the Paul, Paul should give this lecture to sleep. Um, the excitement excitement and the confusion has come from near simultaneous two drugs approved in similar settings, but one with a biomarker and one without a biomarker. Mm. Uh, before, if you take away the biomarker, you would look at dosing, you would look at schedules, three week versus two week, and efficacy, which was very similar between the two. You throw in the biomarker contingent with one of the drugs, pembrolizumab, and that was based on this, this study that uh, Eddie Guerin reported. Uh, again, that changes things. And, and on a superficial basis, the biomarker data is very impressive. The cutoff point they used was greater than 50%, 41% response rate. Sound familiar to what we had yeah. uh, in first line right. with uh, NAD paclitaxel? And the same thing is happening here. You're going to ignore that because it's not about testing the biomarker. Every center across the country when this drug was approved said, well, okay, let's just reflex test on our biopsy front line. Problem, you can't use biopsies that are greater than six months old, and this is a second line right. drug. Yeah. Which test would you use and, and how should you do it? So that forced you in the second line setting to make a decision. Will you just write the order for nivolumab and not worry about the biomarker? If your patient rapidly progressed on first-line treatment with squamous uh, therapy, then you could use that archive biopsy if there was enough left to send for staining. And if there was a greater than 50%, then it would direct you to use pembrolizumab. And you can get turnaround times that are about <coughs> seven to 10 days on those types of uh, tests. Or you just default to nivolumab because you don't want to have to rebiopsy, risk that patient. They're progressing, you know. And so, uh, I, I think this has been the, sh the the part that's been a bit of a shame, because I like that biomarker directed data. I think both drugs are wonderful drugs, but it's clear that we cannot find a biomarker uh, enriched subset as great as we can with the pembrolizumab and PDL1 testing. This will all change, this is caveated in about a year if the first line data comes out and there will be reflex testing and, and people will have to do that, which kit I don't even want to go into right. and what mm -hmm. score. But right now I think we have two great options, especially in, in patients with squamous cell cancer. We have discussed this extensively within our lung section group and we have put both of them as preferred regimens and one that just requires pdl one testing again what not everybody knows is you can't use that archive tissue right. if it's greater than six months old. And preferably newer, the better. Right. You don't want it sitting on the shelf for five and a half months. So you, so you mentioned some challenges with the pdl one biomarker. Obviously, uh, tumor specimens older than six months probably are not optimal. Tumor heterogeneity, the different platforms, the different cutoffs. Um, a lot of confusion there, um, and whether this should be routinely incorporated or should we just de facto give these patients checkpoint inhibitors. I think in the squamous cell population, at least in my center, we're not testing for pd one given the data from Checkmate. Check, excuse me, Checkmate. Um, uh, nevertheless, certainly compelling data out of the keynote uh, study showing that different cutoffs, depending on the pd one cutoff, led to higher response rates with this with this drug. Paul, thoughts on the pd one uh, biomarker? Should it be used in the squamous cell population? Should this be something that's just reserved? and the non-squamous, uh, where, where do we sit with this in your mind? So for now, it's pretty clear. We should not use it in squamous lung cancer, uh, in part because, and this is the main thing, uh, it was not predictive for nivolumab, and because the uh, biomarker pd one testing results have not been stratified by histology, so histology, biomarker positive, negative for adeno, for squamous in uh, the keynote study. So we don't know. 
Uh, but if you put those two together, then you really shouldn't test. Um, and then it becomes a you know a pretty simple answer. If you're not going to test, then you give nivolumab right. really essentially because you got to test if you're going to give hemolizumab. All these Merck people are crying out there. <laughs> I know, but you know that's practically speaking, adenocarcinoma is a, it's a lot more difficult as, right. as both of you had mentioned because um, you have you know it's approved with biomarker, but there there's no guidance to what degree of uh, percent positivity for the tumor that you're going to use. And we know, taking a look at least by response rate, which was gradated by uh, more than just less than or greater than 50%, that there's variation in response, that you know, it's very high, uh, just, shy, just south of 50% if you're 75 to 100%. If you're less than 1%, it's 8%. And then it sort of goes up you know, uh, by uh, grades from there. And, um, and this is important because if if you're going to get pembrolizumab, and let's say your score comes back as like 8% tumor positivity, what do you do with that, right? right? So you could do the exercise of going to the appendix, because it's in the appendix yes. of the study, to see what the, the response, response rate, rate yeah. and then try to figure out if that makes sense relative to docetaxel remiserumab. I've done that before, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a lot of extra work, yeah. and I don't think community oncologists have time to do that yeah. uh, for every single patient they're gonna see. So we have a situation where it's biomarker approved. We don't have guidance, but we do know it makes a difference in terms of what percent tumor uh, positivity is present. And so you're left with sort of a, a mess. Yeah, I um, think it's... And in addition to that, I think as Ed was talking about, we want a biomarker that's really good. We want something that's really discriminating. If it's present, you'll respond. If it's absent, right. you won't respond. Something binary. And, right, and pdl one testing does not do that. If it's absent, you still may respond. And in fact, clinical characteristics may be better predictors. If you're a never smoker, you probably shouldn't give it. Uh, you should probably give docetaxel ramucirumab instead, mm -hmm. right? So there are these subtleties that are involved that make it very difficult uh, to figure out what we're going to do in addition to all the things that you guys had mentioned. So, so a lot I mean, of... This reminds me of the director's consortium <laughs> that nobody wants to talk about anymore, right? Yeah, right, the that's right. That's right. That was going right. to solve the rule and get us away from a histology-based uh, <laughs> right. program and all molecular sort of trees. And we learned that, just as you say, it's equally important. Right. Clinical yeah. characteristics are equally important right. as the molecular Especially with this drug. Um, That's right. So a lot of outstanding questions with biomarker, clinical versus molecular enrichment with the institution of these drugs. Um, just